Let's start off with the Fed, because a lot of these moves, these artificial reasons to slam the gold price down, comes off the heels of Fed statements or Fed misdirection. What's what's going on with the Fed right now? Are they going to raise rates in June or, or July? Or what's, what's going to happen? Well, I, I, in a way, I guess we should probably hope that they do, Dan. It's, it's funny how everybody thinks that that somehow is negative for the gold price. As we watched gold go down ever since they started QE3, you know, gold went down for three years. While we're in QE3 and, and uh, zero rates and all that, well, once we got a rate hike back in December, gold's gone from 1060 to today's 1240. So maybe we should be pulling for a rate hike, Dan, at this point. I totally agree. Uh, it's been it's been interesting to watch though because you know the after the last Fed meeting at the end of April and they put out the statement at the end of the meeting that everybody took as dovish and then I think Mother Felon had a speech maybe a day later where she talked about maybe only one maybe two rate hikes instead of this three or four nonsense that they were peddling early in the year and the dollar index just sank through the floor and that's when gold shot up and actually traded above 1300 for a couple of days at the end of April and in early May. And since then, all of these Fed goons have been paraded out on an almost a daily basis to talk about, you know, how I even saw one yesterday. Williams out of San Francisco said seven rate hikes in the next 18 months. And I'm thinking, seriously, you're going to put the Fed funds rate above where the 10 year note is. But apparently everybody falls for this stuff. Nonetheless, that's prompted a bid in the dollar. And the dollar where back on May the 1st, May the 2nd, looked like it was ready to just collapse back into the 80s, has suddenly reversed. And today it's back up to 95 and a half. And so this trade in gold backing off from you know, 12 or 1305 down to 1235 is entirely related to that as these HFT algos that trade the paper derivatives you know, they don't care about the fundamentals. It doesn't matter what the physical gold situation is. It doesn't matter how much uh, gold is allegedly flowing into the ETFs. These algos that trade the paper derivatives, they just see the movement in the dollar or the dollar yen, and, and then they buy and sell paper gold because of that. So at the end of the day, the dollar's been rising, gold's been going down. But I think we need to keep it all in perspective, keep looking at the bigger picture and realize that even – even though we are down here in the last couple of weeks, we're still up 16 or 17 percent year to date. And if if you and I were talking back on New Year's Eve last year, Dan, and I said, hey, by uh, by the end of May, we're going to be north of 1200. We probably all would have taken it. So uh, sure. we got to kind of keep our heads screwed on straight. Yeah. And, you know, during the 70s, the Fed raised interest rates aggressively and gold had the best rally it's ever seen. As far as are they really going to raise rates? I don't know, maybe a little bit, but I mean, it's it's it almost seems like now they're going to hype it up, and uh, the equivalency of a Fed cut from like ten years ago is now them just pulling back their own comments and essentially doing nothing. Uh, for the gold shares, the gold shares have gone absolutely ballistic this year. Uh, what are what are you looking at when you when it comes to the gold mining shares for people who want to speculate in the gold market? Uh, more aggressively with the gold shares? Well, you know, Dan, you mentioned post-traumatic stress and how we've all just been beaten to death over the last three years in a, in a declining price channel where that was always marked by lower highs and lower lows. And that's what the mining shares and the higher highs are the two things that are completely different this time that makes us feel as if the bull market has resumed or a new bull market has begun, however you want to look at it. And those mining shares are definitely something that's got everybody's attention. That index, the Huey index, which we follow at TF Metals Report quite a bit, got all the way down to 99 on January the 19th. And then it reached a high of about 235 back when gold was north of 1300 in early May. So after a 135% move in about, she's not even 100 days, the fact that we've pulled back 15%, uh, gosh, that's entirely natural. It doesn't mean that the, now the hooey is going back down to 99. That's kind of how we're all conditioned, like you said. You just think, oh, man, here they come. Uh, I do think that the, the higher highs we put in in price, this major move in the miners kind of front running even higher prices ahead, I think is a good sign. So for folks that have been waiting for some kind of pullback that thought some of these shares have gotten ahead of themselves, well, hey, now's your chance. And then we'll just see how the month of June plays out 
once we get into the economic data and then that next all important Fed meeting, which is coming up on like the 14th and 15th of June, could very well see uh, the end of this correction by then. Now, how about the what's going on behind the scenes? Because that's one of the things that there's not really too many websites, uh, too many analysts tracking that. And I saw on Zero Hedge, it was like a week or two ago, maybe last week, that $2.3 billion essentially on the gold market early in the morning, hit the bid all within 10 minutes. If you can, if you can comment on that story, because I know you're familiar with it. And then also what's going on with the supply at the COMEX? Well, that type of stuff happens all the time. We see it, and it actually, we even see it on the upside, too. When shorts get squeezed, you get this big burst of, of uh, buying that comes in. And, and that's an old trick that the cartel banks play on the, sh- on the sell side, where they'll come in and just drop in at an illiquid time a whole bunch of sell orders and wipe out all of the current bids that are currently there, and you get almost an air pocket in price. That's... Gosh, for those of us who have followed the metals, we've seen that for years. That That's just kind of been their modus operandi. But what we've seen uh, in particular this year is a massive issuance of paper gold by the banks on the that operate on the COMEX in that speculators come in wanting to get a position and exposure to gold, the speculator being a hedge fund, a trading fund, uh, uh, high net worth individuals, whatever. And rather than dealing with a finite supply of contracts based off of an actual physical amount of gold backing up those contracts, these banks just issue new contracts to these specs, absorbing that buying pressure. In fact, in the while we were up around 1,300, the total open interest of Co- COMEX contracts went from 500,000 to 600,000 without price really moving at all. Mm. And if, if open interest had been held, forced to hold steady, if to meet the buying demand, you had to find willing sellers of existing contracts, price would have moved even higher. But since the banks were able to just simply create new contracts and feed them into the specular demand, you tamp down price, you keep price under control. Now, that sets up an interesting situation now because gold as it trades on the these paper derivative contracts trade on the COMEX, most of the action, most of the open interest, most of the trading volume is what in what we call the front month. That is the month that is closest to going into delivery. At present, that front month is the June contract. Uh, the June contract at one time got all the way up to like 400,000 contracts of open interest. But now we're moving into the period where that June contract will go off the board and go into its alleged delivery phase during the actual calendar month of June. So all of these speculators, all of these hedge funds that own the June contract that have no intention of taking physical delivery or even trying, what they need to do is liquidate their June position and close it out. And then as you close it out, roll that position into the next front month, which will be August. And some will actually even roll out further into October or into December. There's still 188,000 contracts of June open interest that's still open as of last night, uh, which was the what 23rd, mm-hmm. Dan. That contract goes off the board in a week. So there's 188,000 contracts that will need to be liquidated. Now, sometimes a, a money manager will sell their 100 Junes and immediately buy 100 August. To maintain their position that's a lot of what we saw back in March as the April contract went off the board but sometimes when you're already in a downtrend that money manager will say okay well liquidate the hundred Junes but only buy me 50 of my August for now because maybe price will go down a little further and we'll buy the other 50 you know and save ourselves 20 bucks well net net that's a net selling pressure of 50 contracts you see what I mean I see yeah so a lot of times as we approach Contract expiration is what what we call it, where that contract goes off the board and full margin is required to continue to hold it into the delivery period. You get this accumulated selling pressure, and that's kind of what we're seeing now. I mean, gold's down $17 as we speak. The dollar's up a little bit today, but no doubt we're getting a lot of this rolling out of June, but not fully rolling into these other months. That will continue into next week as well. So at the end of the day, you've got to understand these are the kind of the 
minute that goes on behind the scenes in the paper derivative market that have an impact on the short term. But in the long term, a lot of those positions will probably come back in, especially with the employment report next week and with the Fed meeting in Fe- in, in uh, June, and we'll very likely see buying pressure and see price come right back. You know, that kind of analysis, everyone who's listening to this, tfmetalsreport.com, you really don't get that very many other places. And uh, Craig has, is able to explain it in layman terms. And that's the kind of analysis you get and the kind of edge you get. As you can see, you can use that for trading. You can use that for your cult, your uh, gold, physical gold accumulation, your purchases. Uh, so check it out at tfmetalsreport.com. Uh, for the low cost of $10 per month, which is like two Frappuccinos, you can uh, become a paid member. But there's also a free site, too, uh, which has daily posts as well. Craig, um, I've talked to Rick Rule and Keith Newmeyer in the past uh, week or two. And both of them, I mean, these guys have been around for 30, 40 years. They, they, they talk as if it's a foregone conclusion. It's done. This is the bull market. Uh, it started. Uh what are your thoughts? I know we talked a little about it in the beginning of the show, but uh, did you have any kind of key numbers that you want to see us cross as, phys- as far as physical gold? Do you believe this is now? Are you 100% confident that we're in a bull market? I have a little of that post-traumatic stress myself, Dan, in that we watched, again, and I've made note of this on the side. I've been talking about this on my site since the middle of February when we saw open interest expand and we saw the the structure of the paper market as defined by the commitment of traders report moved back to extremes that in the previous three years when we were in the downtrend those extremes led to massive you know sells what we call a wash and rent cycle of the specs and then moving down to even lower lows we've postponed that for the last 90 days and i think everybody looks at it now and goes okay that's what we're all worried about here we go again there are again two things that are different this time first the higher highs like we talked about gold had consistent anybody can pull up a weekly chart of the last three or four years and just see just this down channel of consistently lower highs and lower lows well when we got through 1190 back in uh, early february that was a finally for the first time a higher high versus last uh last october then we got through 1230. That was a higher high versus May of 2015. And this is something completely different that we've never seen before. So that right there tells you that we've had kind of a change of trend, a change of sentiment. And again, you also factor in what we've seen in the miners. We never in the last three years, as the Huey index came down from 600 to 400 to 200 to 100, did we ever see, we, we saw little bumps but we never saw a 130% rally. So putting some of that stuff together and then the fundamental things that have changed, such as the almost global installation of negative interest rate policy. You know, that was always the, the argument against holding gold was, hey, Dan, it doesn't pay a dividend. All it does is collect dust. Well, 0% dividend beats the heck out of negative 1% or negative 2%, mm-hmm. right? Sure does. And, and the dynamics of the global gold and silver markets, which are tiny compared to the amount of actual investable capital that's out there, really make you think that, that you know what, we've turned a corner in terms of awareness and then a flow of funds back into these, not only the paper markets, but the physical markets now forcing uh, a bullish scheme of higher highs. If you go back to You know, the way it used to be in 2008, 2009, 2010, bull markets, even in the paper markets, are kind of noteworthy for their three steps forward and two steps back type scheme. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of what we're in now. I mean, we've been taking three steps forward and two steps back. And even as as we look this morning, I'm watching gold trade at 1234. And you think, oh, gosh, that's so terrible because remember, you know, even just last week it was 1274. But if we go back to the end of March, again, when that April contract was going off the board, we were 1234. So it's not like, you know, the, you know, the sky is falling. I and mean, we're just simply back to where we were a couple of months ago. And as I said, for the year, we're up 16, 17%. I do think the low is in. I think we found 
almost kind of physical floors to the paper markets down around $14 silver and somewhere around $1,100 gold. Um, the trend now has changed and we'll just see, let's just see where we end up at the end of the year. And uh, we assess this whole three steps forward, two steps back routine. And we, just, and we noticed that we end up having a pretty darn good 2016. Yeah, and, and you know, one of the big things I, I've been looking at is when we when we started making 52-week highs, you know, where we came off the bottom and just, you know, the gold, silver, the mining shares, everybody just keeps making 52-week highs. So definitely things changed. And, you know, behind the scenes, just to reveal to the people who made it to this uh, part of the show, we're at the end here, just to give you guys a, a, a gold nugget here that uh, that really not nobody has access to except Craig and I. But I can tell you the future money trend site this time last year had about 38,000 people visit the website during the month of uh, May. Our last 30 days, we've seen 125,000 people. <laughs> That's and, terrific. And I am talking to other gold sites and everybody's seeing the same thing across the board. The interest of, for metals and for this type of you know, for in the interest on, on what the Fed is doing, what's going on really in the economy, of course, with the election, it's all it's all changing. And uh, it's the tide is turning. If, if I could add something real quick, sure. and it, same thing is true at, at my site. I've never had more <laughs> subscribers in three years than we have now. And we're just scratching the surface, obviously, because of the global awareness of precious metals and precious metals investing and why you own it and why you stack it. People are just finally starting to figure this out. But, I, you know, I went back and uh, a couple of weeks ago and rewatched a presentation by Grant Williams um, that's on YouTube. He put it out the first week of January, and it's great. It's called Nobody Cares, and it's funny, mm -hmm. and it's informative, and it's everybody should Google Grant Williams, Nobody Cares, and watch it. Anyway, this data was based off the end of the year, okay, back when the miners were down really far and gold was down at 1060. But he noted then that – Globally, pension funds had an, in all pension fund assets, it's just the pension fund sliver of assets. Globally, pension funds, their exposure to gold and gold related investments was 0.15%. And Grant said if they just simply take that to 0.3%, that would be enough money to buy every single gold miner in the GDX every single gold miner in the GDXJ and all of the outstanding shares of the GLD. <laughs> so if we get any kind of awareness, any kind of growing sentiment worldwide to own gold or gold miners, I mean, we're, this idea that we're 1234 and you know, and everybody's freaking out because the, the hooey's back toward 200, <laughs> it's going to be a, a distant memory. So people need to keep yeah. kind of the bigger picture in mind and realize that uh we're in this we're in the long battle to win not just a little sprint every day where we're worried about you know the day-to-day -day flight